Singapore's godmother of funny things, Kuma! Wow. Wow. wow! Do you remember your first performance? I cried. Because there were a lot of hecklers. If you make fun of people, you make fun of yourself. And a lot of people cannot do that. Like... <laughs> <laughs>
she just ignored the fan. Huh. Like, you should do a choreography to pick it up, right? Hmm. She just left it in the fan using one hand. Right? <laughs> 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 no, then the other she just do extra with the <laughs> 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 like very stupid, um. That one um, doesn't work for me. So if right now he want to go and be a drag queen, right? I'll where does he no. begin? Yeah. Wait lah, give me a chance lah. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> we just met. <laughs> if this one decides to go and be a drag queen, maybe got chance. Yes. All right. Okay. Like the body shape. Is it the eyebrows? The body shape. Not the eyebrow. Uh, eyebrow uh, can. Uh, no lah. No, there's so many big drag. I can queens. pull off. I can pull off. Yeah lah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But drag is drag is not <laughs> transgender. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drag is just exaggeration. So yeah. even straight men can drag. Mm. What What made you try it? Because I was always doing it behind doors, right? Without my mother knowing. And I thought, because I failed the first time I did stand up. So how, I how would you, sorry, let's go into that. What do you mean you failed the first because time? Because I was just doing knock knock jokes, which is really stupid. I mean, I felt stupid staying on stage. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Uh, knock, knock, who's no there? No way! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then knock, knock, who's there? Opportunity. Oh. Opportunity, opportunity, who? Who? opportunity only knock once. <laughs> 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 No, because in 1992, people uh. were not ready. <laughs> 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 that, was, that was explicit in 1992, guys. Fucking no, no, don't because like jokes. <laughs> the general public were not ready for stand-up comedy. Uh. They don't know what it is it all about. Do I laugh? Do I not laugh? Do I react? Okay. So to get their attention, I went in drag. Okay. Mm. Right. And then I had a lot of problems with the police because this is a cabaret and then you cannot wear a dress. Man cannot wear a dress. At that point of time, Jean-Paul Gaultier came up with the perfume, with the bottle like that. Yeah. With the guy with the bra. Yeah, I think so. I have no idea. Uh huh. How old are you? Thirty. You know, all in four. I thirty three, four this year. Millennial lah. No, you know. Two years in the industry. Already. So I questioned them lah, the police. So I, I, I do want to take it back to the knock knock jokes part, right? Because I want to know how you even <laughs> decided that you want to attempt stand up. And in Singapore, like how? Oh, how did you do I that was, at that time? I was just told to do stand up, ah, right? Like. It, When there was no stand up, how could yeah. how could someone yeah. just be like, why don't you? So they gave me books from MPH. Who's they? <laughs> my boss lah. Uh. MPH. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, book store, yeah. They would buy oh. your book and then from there read, read lah. Right, very bad. <laughs> how you? Okay, hold up. <laughs> you bought a joke book, then you perform the joke book. Yeah lah. Who made you do that? That's crazy. His boss. Yeah, who's your boss? boss? What were you doing at that time? So I moved to sex joke, and then boom, everything went uphill. <laughs> Wait, that's a missing bit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I the only one? Yeah, yeah. Which company you work in? The in owners of the club. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So okay. Be, just like, okay, go tell jokes. Then they give you a joke book. <laughs> and then you say, okay. And then you wear your knock-knock jokes. You know? Do you remember your first performance? I cried. That's all I know. <laughs> Because there were a lot of hecklers. Right. Aqua, aqua, oh, oh. very bad. Huh? So it was very hurting. But then my boss told me, it's either you swim or you drown. Yeah. Right. So I decided to swim. Uh. Yeah. Mm. What was the career path? I was a, I'm a, I was an Indian classical dancer. Oh. So I'm more into classical dance and ballet and blah, blah, blah. Right. Then This why one, did you switch? Moonlight. Oh. I was yeah. offered a part-time job, $30 per night. So you tried and then the experience wasn't very nice, yet you decided Because to continue trying. Money. Okay, okay. Mm. So it paid well back in the day. Yeah, like last time, 2008, it's a lot of money already. Wow. Okay. This was after your NS already? Yeah, when I was already 23. And that's a long time over already. So they mean, sorry, they mean they offered you that spot for 1,008 um, uh, a night, a month. A month lah. A, a month. month. <laughs> <laughs> that's even what, well, that's even how much the prostitute earns there. Only in MBS, the prostitutes earn 1,000. <laughs> right? No, the Spanish girls 1,000. Huh. Yeah, so yeah, so you were 1,000 <laughs> a yeah. month to, to perform. Plus, plus, plus minus, don't yeah. tell me. Because mm-hmm. CPF, all that gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to perform right, every weekend. Every night. Oh. Every night. Like how, for how long is the set? Like No, we have a it- uh, dance item in between. Oh, yeah. ah, okay, okay. So we had like 10 dancers. I know, sorry, six dancers and about five drag queens. Right. Also, it was it was more. So we do item item. Then I come out and do like maybe one minute joke, one joke, right, and then yeah. item that one joke. The break is for them to change. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. Mm. Which is was at the boom boom room. At the boom boom room. Initially, it's, it's quite funny because your shows now, at least like the most recent one I saw, guilty, is also like that because it's jokes and then there's. Drag. Yeah, but now it's longer. I'm doing like yeah, I do like one and a half. The whole show is one and a half hour. Mm. Wow. My break is only the dance number. Yeah. And then mm. I have to change, and then I have to appear again, and then the finale part. I'm. Appear again, yeah. so it's a lot of performance. Wow. Was comedy the dream, or, or it became a dream after that? 
So what was what was it originally, or like how did you get? I was to working that point? in Hapa Villa as an actor of Chinese mythology. So I was learning. I was acting as Winter, doing Chinese old mythology stories. You were acting as a Chinese character. Yeah, in Hapa Villa. I'm fair. What? What you see? Yeah, he is fair. What are you saying? He's not. No, as in nowadays <laughs> people show complain that <laughs> you try, you try, he yeah. go and play some other role. No, but no, wait, hold up. There was a job there, so there's always actors in Hopa Villa, just yeah. acting and skidding around. Yeah. Oh shit, that's so it fun. Was, yeah, it was very fun, but the money was no good. That's why right, I didn't yeah. like. That place haunted. <gasps> so. Oh yeah, that's why we don't have night. <laughs> <laughs> I always mm. wanted to perform. There's a Hapa Villa performing every mm. day. So I wanted to perform, and then it became a dream to make people laugh. And then it became my happiness. Right. My happiness spot is the stage. Right. Sharing nice things from people keeps you motivated. People come and tell you you're really good. You're a national treasure. You are really, 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 really. Yeah. And people say like, yeah, last night I performed. People bring their children now, mm. you know, who are 18 years old. And then they, and then to parents, I ask the mother, why you brought your son? This is education. Right. Wow. They consider this part of education. Mm. But you want to know about Singapore? Go and watch Kumar. Wow. Everything is in one one show. Because I talk about everything, all yeah. the issues, the Sento, yesterday Sentosa, the oil. Talk about it. I talk about everything. You talk current. about the oil spill. Yeah. It just oh. happened. Yeah. You happened. No, because it just happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very current. Like I went talking about yesterday, the lady who got arrested, seventy year old for pickpocketing. <laughs> again yeah. at Ishun. <laughs> yeah. Ishun is the scariest place. And then the teenage boy who was caught growing. Marijuana in his house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there's so many mm. current affairs. So when you see the news, right, and then you have a show on the night, like, what's your process of then, like, going? Okay, I can talk about <laughs> this. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that like on a? I As in you, you look at it and then immediately something's funny to you. Yeah. Okay. Like the boy growing marijuana, it's just that the parents didn't even know it was marijuana. I don't know how come parents didn't know. Yeah. You cannot recognize the leaf. So maybe the parents thought our son so sweet is into gardening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, you see. <laughs> So it's, wow, okay. there's so many things happening. Every day one Chinese man was caught carrying a knife in the public bus. Mm. So many, you just, oh, some people don't even know there's such news, you know, and then when right. I tell people, huh? Got such thing. There are a lot of cuckoo, cuckoo people out so there. So when, when you see the news in the morning and then you're showing the night, do you write it down? Do you write down the joke or you just remember? You I know used you to, but I will just remember. Wow, okay. It, it just, you just remember, it just do be like that. Yeah. Your whole life. I, yeah. I feel like that's my biggest. Like if I were ever to try and if I come out, so, come out with some six, 30 minute set, right? I will just keep looking at my phone. <laughs> Why? Uh? Forget law. Because you, when you look at comedians, the way they jump from things is a bit, the link very small one. Uh. But it's it's years of experience. Uh. Mm, mm, mm. But it's new memory that they, lo- they wrote last month. Ma. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 oh. But it's people new, don't know. Uh, like, people don't. So there's no way on a piece of paper you wrote your joke on the floor. God. No, oh, no, no. Okay. On the floor, no, no, no. I have a book. <laughs> That ah. you don't see on stage, lah, right? No. Wow. Oh, this, is that what you do during your break room? You're going to look at second half of your day? No, I don't. It's just all. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting on makeup. <laughs> so I, hard for me to believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, a lot of people cannot believe. I, when I'm putting on makeup, I rehearse. I pre- plan my skeleton for the night. Right. Why is like usually your joke that gets the biggest laugh? Oh. Anything sexual. Oh. <laughs> why, do you, why do you think we enjoy sex jokes so much as a country? I think because it's funny, it's relatable. It's talking about the different race, you know, about sex jokes about them, but without using the vulgarity. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's very hard to get, do it without vulgarity. So when you get your audience to that level, <laughs> then it just becomes better and better and better. Right. Do you, do you think you you know exactly where these boundaries are on the stuff yeah, you say yeah, that yeah. might get cancelled or won't get cancelled? Yeah, I do. Has there ever been an instance when like, maybe like you do crowd work or what, right? Then the person really get offended. I only need to start doing crowd work now. Mm. Last time I don't do. Oh, okay, okay. So, but now you're Kuma already. Like. You know, but now so cr- cr- the crowd want to talk because after COVID, everybody wants to participate. So when you talk <laughs> to them, they talk back. I yeah. mean, but they talk nice things. Are you married? Yeah, oh. Yeah. You know? Also, like, you're at this stage of your career where nobody yeah. wants to with you also. Uh, you you, know you I mean? can use vulgarity. Uh. I can. This oh, never tell me. Okay, here comes. Feel free, feel Yeah, so no, 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 I don't want. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't touch like, okay, for an example, I don't make joke about the turbulence. Because yeah. I'm also sensitive about it. Like. Okay. People, people yeah. die, people yeah, get yeah, paralyzed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't talk about it. I don't even make jokes about it. So I, I know where to draw the line. Uh. Yeah. Mm. Like just now when he said he was telling this random fact about this Chinese man that brought a knife around. Was that, that to me uh, is something that online creators won't do anymore. Online creators? We won't even describe. There's just like people like us. We you don't even describe Chinese, Chinese men. men. Yeah. yeah, but it was Chinese men. What? Yeah, like we're just being descriptive, right? I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> 
Right. Like the Chinese, okay. Like the Chinese man. I mean, they put their Chinese name, ah. Uh. Yes. <laughs> How yeah, can yeah. they say? Okay, but I understand where you're coming from, but she so recently saw a Chinese man got drunk, right? 62 yeah. years old, went home, trying to have sex with the wife. She refused him. She sexually assaulted his mother. I'm <gasps> okay. Hmm. Another dangerous place. <laughs> <laughs> I actually remember like when I was in my early 20s, it was my first time going to see your show. I think it was still at Boat Key or something. And I was so nervous because- Boat Key? I think it was at, Canvas, at, at, yeah. A, yeah, at, a, at a club in- oh, I remember watching you at Canvas also. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm still doing right now. Ah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. And I was so nervous because like at that age, right? And at that time also, there, I, I, did, I really didn't know what to expect. You know, and in Singapore, it's so conservative, right? And then you hear that there's this Kuma show and it's going to be different. It's going to be, you don't really know what to expect, like you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when I went in, then, wow, I was so scared. You actually pointed at me. I was hiding at the back oh. of the room with my friends. <laughs> and then you were looking for somebody to come on stage. Then you pointed straight down the middle at me. Then I, oh, I'm scared because I don't need to go on stage. Then you keep pointing. Then suddenly one guy's in front of me, stand up. Oh, okay. Then, then he goes. <laughs> After that, I sit down on you. <laughs> no, he he made the guy do like a like a lap dance on another girl. Oh. <laughs> oh. Could have been you. Yeah, I was so scared. <laughs> Which you wanted after knowing what no, you no, the no, no. Who you wanted to be you, but it was crazy. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, but I think a lot of people come because they're curious. But now people come because they know mm. what they expect. So people, there's no. People don't get offended, you know. Even if they get offended, for me, I always tell people: if you are the easily offended type, don't come, mm. because she has yeah. no old bar, mm. you know. So you have to take everything the pinch of salt. Because I make fun of all race, policies, politics. So if you cannot laugh at yourself, don't come. Mm. I think there's the other aspect also of like, I think a lot of comedians like internationally have come out and said also like, you have to be able to differentiate the act and the person. Cause yeah. like sometimes people can't differentiate that. They yeah. think that that's your real like point yeah, of yeah. view. Yeah, because I know that a lot of comedian actors in Singapore and Mediacorp, mm. they always trying to be funny off and on camera. I'm like, when is the real you, mm. you know? Mm. So you must be able to switch on, switch off. You know, I've seen, I've sat tables with com comedians where like, constantly there's a pressure for them to be funny. Everything we say, they must make it funny. So <laughs> I feel like there is no pressure for you to be funny. So because I'm not funny, I wouldn't even, I'm on stage because you can't switch off. Mm. And that's professional. And every time we say something, you want to rebut with a funny line. It's not funny anymore. Then when are you, when are you really you? So when you go home, you lie down on the bed, then it's you. Uh. Yeah. Mm. Not just stand-up comedian, comedian actors also. Right. right. Stand-up comedians, we know who. La. But <laughs> comedian <laughs> actors, those in the Malay side, the Chinese side, all like that. Irritates me. Did you struggle with this early on or like you already knew this off the bat? You know what I mean? Because like for us also, right? Like as we were coming up with like YouTube and all that, then we also start to struggle with our identity. Like who we are on, on the show is only a part of who we, we actually really are, are yeah. as, as people. Ma. But it took us quite a while to figure that out. Yes. I think the key difference between many of those um, people that you talk about and you, right? Is that for them, I think they realized innately they are quite funny. They like to entertain their friends and then their friends say, maybe you should try acting. But I think for you, your boss say, Kuma, go be funny. <laughs> Then yeah. you did it for the money. You know what I mean? Yeah, so literally you stepped in the shoes to be someone that you weren't. Then you taught yourself to enjoy it. Yeah. Whereas the rest found a job that they could do. Mm. Oh, when I mean, some of them are doing it very badly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> they thought they could do. <laughs> Your mother tell them they can do. I learned to be patient a bit more with COVID. COVID's COVID is a big thing for you. Huh? COVID is a big like thing for me because it's for taught people a lot of things to, I know friends who are having an affair. Because you know, COVID? And after COVID, they went back to the family. Oh. oh so right. there are good things that happen. It was a reset for a lot. A reset for them. And also there are a lot more um, bisexuals now. Yeah. A lot more married men are curious to try another man. Because I'm in the gay app called Grinder, And there are a lot of men that are married. Ooh. Married to a woman. So I'm seeing a lot of people are coming but up. Are they many. of a generation you think? Are they like, for example- Yeah, they're all, all in their, their 40s. 40s. Right. Oh. Which is a repressed, they have a repressed youth, which yeah, our generation yeah. may not have. Yeah, my time was already repressed. Like yeah. a lot of men who are supposed actually to be gay, they got married yeah. to yeah. shut their family up. Yeah. Right. I know of this guy who got married because the mother said you must get married. And then after that, the girl slept with her ex-boyfriend. 
So the son now blames the mother for the divorce. Oh. But he's gay. Right. So oh. everybody wins. Ah, so it's like. <laughs> <laughs> so the mother doesn't talk about marriage anymore, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Because she failed it, right? Yeah. So mm. smart, no, very smart. Right. And the people are not smart, lah. But now you just—you never really know where he's going in the story. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what it's about. <laughs> but it's fantastic. Just, yeah. The last line just goes. You supposedly came out through your book, because nobody asked me. Okay. So I came out in the book, lah. It was also at a time where you were, if I'm not wrong, the first entertainer like, to yeah, come out. Singaporean publicly. entertainer to come out publicly. What? No, because the book is all about me, so I have to be honest, what? Yeah. Mm. I mean, That's exactly what the writer say. How can I hide my sexuality till now? But so did you think, feel like, oh no, like this is the first time it's going no, to come I'm out? No, I'm ready to say because okay. my parents know, my mother knew, my father died. So, so what also was your the parents impact? knew in that you told them, or they just never asked you? Also, you my just father never them. asked me. My my father before he died, he told me, "You're going to be alone for the rest of your life, so save money." So he knew already. He knew la. La. Mm. Right, right, right. Mm. right, right. So, so what was the impact of, of that? Like when you finally, like public- Liberation, no la. <laughs> la. Okay la, good la. at least they know la. <laughs> so mother, I know me. <laughs> my mother still wishes that I may get married, but I won't. Mm. Why would I want to spy? Hey, can you imagine walking with your wife and you looking at other men? You both can look so. at the men together. <laughs> <laughs> that's and nowadays, man. nowadays people <laughs> swinger couples you will, will have his face one a lot of points like I think there are people that will be confused about like whether they like to cross dress because they actually prefer to be say a female and was there ever a point like that for you that I want to be a female mm. yes very young time but then I changed my mind thank god why thank god because I won't be who I am now how far you think you would have gone to I would have, I would have gone to the streets right I mean, I would have ended up prostitute uh, because those days- Why is that the route though? You want to be a girl, you be a girl. You know what I mean? Why does yeah, it, but when why you be a girl, you, you cannot work. And then where you're going to get, you put food on the table. Right. That was the problem last time. They don't employ, not like Louisa now, body shop. Oh, they oh. employ transgender. Mm. Right, those days, right. nobody employs you. Right. You cannot work for the government. You cannot, you know. So no jobs, so they all end up in the streets, poor thing. Right. Now they put them on the, then who first started was Mac Makeup. Mm. And then body shop, also had transgender and then they started stealing. And then Luriza also has, mm. but they can't steal because it's already very cheap, right? Steal is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so the transgender are all now- It's the hair clip shop, is it? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, like during COVID, it's all so the prostitution specific. went to online. I mean, I'm being special yeah, because yeah, I, know, yeah, yeah. I know stories. Yeah. <laughs> so now the prostitution has gone online. Right? Okay. Right. Telegram. <laughs> I don't know. Telegram, I don't know they got prostitution okay. now. Not yet, <laughs> la. Not yet. Give a couple of days. Just now we talked a bit about, I mean, the documentary and all that, and then like having a son that lives with you now, right? Do you think you yourself, right? Do you observe any changes about yourself when you became a parent? I give in too much. You I let him do it. Him, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I you, saw the part about the PS4 and like. Yeah, yeah wow, what, spoil him. <laughs> He used to be a gangster. Eh? He used to come home after clubbing, take chopper, knife, or want to go and fight, all. So I just tell him, bring it back. I need to cook tomorrow. <laughs> and then that slowly, slowly he stopped. So I spoiled him, lah. Give him everything, everything. But in you a way, did, you saved, did a great job, though. Yeah, I you, you saved his life because he would have. Yeah, because at least he woke up, lah. Yeah. Uh, mm. But there are people who don't, right? There's still parents who are living there. The son is still a gangster. The one recently died, the 35 year old Indian guy. Mm. Yeah. Salak. Mm. Okay. No. <laughs> you just know <laughs> things. <laughs> I know things. I know things. Really, information comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> I am the HDB Kepo Anti. <laughs> <laughs> Every taxi driver. Yeah. And I think just now, like we talked a bit about how people's impression of you, people ended up having a really, really good impression of you after that video came out, right? And a lot of people like do credit you for keeping your son out of trouble. Because I don't see the social media reviews. Mm. Right. Because I don't you go see, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't so see comments. I, yeah. Because it affects me. Yeah. So if it's a bad comment, I don't want to go there. Oh. So, so even if it's on, like for example, when this video goes out, you're not going to see the comments where people like. No. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, And I think like the video talks a bit about a lot of the things that you have done for your son. So I'm curious, like on the other hand, right? How do you think he has changed you for the better? Patience. <laughs> <laughs> because he's- um, You don't recommend fatherhood like, right, in general. <laughs> do you? What's fatherhood? Why fatherhood? Like having a child. I said, me, ah, that it is a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. I mean like, but he came to me at a very oh, much older age. Yeah, so mm. if you have a baby, I cannot relate to babies below 15. Yeah. I cannot with Babies this. below 15. Year old baby <laughs> 15 years old yeah. children are because yeah. <laughs> you can't firstly, reason with them. Yeah, they are irritating. Right. They talk back to their parents. You know how many times in under my block I want to slap how many kids alone? I saw an Indian girl took out a shoe and throw at the mother. Huh? Wow. Just no. over ice cream. Oh my and word. And she's wearing sparkle tots. 
kena garden. Oh no. <laughs> I wanted to whack the kid, but lucky one auntie came and intervened. Small whack. So this you. auntie, you yeah. turn back. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder whether it's similar because in the sense that you say you spoil your son, right? But because he is so, mm. he's quite old already at that point, so he has his own understanding. But there are a lot of these parents nowadays that also spoil their children, ma. But end up when the children grow up, they are so rude. Yeah, a lot of kids now is entitlement. Mm. It's no more about I'm so lucky to have this. No, I have. I ha- I need this. Yeah, I need my handphone. By the time my family is six, I need my laptop, and yeah. they give school as an excuse. Mm. But it's all going the wrong way, and parents are pressured because of the bloody family violence hotline. Mm. Now anybody can call, you know. Oh, you saw the new commercial on TV. Singapore also have this shit now. It's yeah. like child protective services. Kind anybody of thing. can call because there's a lot of family violence. Yeah. Anybody can call it. Uh, you walk past, you see shouty, shouty call. Right. Have you called? No, not yet, lah. My not, no lah. My, my neighbor is very old lady. She, she, she's talking to herself. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that you were not exactly. Just talking about the show. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> uh, yeah. But I think the biggest decision I made was one of the best decision I made was moving into HDB. Hmm. Because I always lived in a condo. Yeah. Just now you also mentioned a bit about how the comments on social media and all that affect you, right? And when you first moved from your condo into like the heartlands and all that, and then there were people making comments about, as in they don't know why you did it, ma. So then there are people that are gossiping in a sense and saying like, oh, is it Kuma like bankrupt? That's why he- Yeah, yeah, I, I so, heard that one. Yeah, like- But I don't have to, I don't have to explain. Mm. But people ask me, I explain because I had CPA money sitting there mm. and mm. I don't know what to do with it. And when I leave it there, so I bought a house. People don't know, don't know lah. Like what's that? Yeah. Gen Z slang, L Y K Y K. If you know, you know. If, like, you, if you know, mm. you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Same period of time where like you move to the HDBs and all that, you also mentioned that you were cutting quite a lot of people out of your life at that point, right? Why? Mm. Why did you decide to do that? Because I was wasting a lot of money on people who don't mean anything to me. What do you mean by wasting money? Like I was buying friendship. You know, like buying right. drinks for them, buying dinner for them, so that they 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 will spend time with me. They feel one sided in that you were the ones that that was initiating the meetups and stuff like that, and then no, they would call too because they freeloaders, what? Right. Yeah, right. It's not who's gonna pay for drinks, right? Uh, uh-uh. they are freeloaders. Okay, and also I gave up my designer stuff to my friends and performers because I don't want to live in that. Must carry a Gucci bag, or yeah. LV bag, you know. But what was what was the event that made you? I just you, got you tired took many of, years to buy all this, ma. So you wanted it at some point. I have tired of pretending to be something I'm not. Mm. Okay. So I can shop in Charles and Keith and still get good stuff. <laughs> yes. Shout out, Charles. Shout, shout out. out. Yeah. Yeah. Charles I didn't know that was a hit. So a compliment. <laughs> no, I just bought. I, I wear Charles and Keith stuff, yeah. and I love it. Mm. Yeah. Especially when they're on sale. Oh. <laughs> They will reach out and this is how it happens. So you will reach out then they'll probably, you'll probably <laughs> yeah, get a sponsorship Go and somewhere. shop and Charles and Keith. <laughs> <laughs> so, but back in the day, what made you think that you needed to have all this like Gucci and Prada and all that? Uh, because I think it was the pressure from everyone else in society that if you're a celebrity, you must carry designer bag. Right. You must drive a nice car. And I only regretted not having license during COVID again. Because <laughs> <laughs> I could have done Grab, right? Would you though, you think? No, but that last I cannot do Grab because you, you need, to have, have, you need you? to have CPU. I would have done it. Mm. I can't just sit at home and watch TV. Eh? Right. Because we were all locked down. And we but I, I think you'll hate it though in, in this this little minutes that I know you. I think you'll hate it. Aren't you Kuma? No, dr- I mean, I drive that during COVID. La. I mean, after yeah. COVID, I go back to work. La. Go back to show. Yeah, yeah, but during COVID, the small talk will kill you, no? Small talk. I with, think you'll hate it. With the people. Yeah. yeah. With yeah, the yeah, passenger, yeah. they will love to yeah. talk to you. But they have... Grab quiet. Go, now very putting, uh, now oh, very putting. There is grab quiet, yeah. Like, What's that? Nobody's for the passenger to choose. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the driver oh, to choose. I choose. <laughs> <laughs> I choose. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a research sheet about you, yeah? Mm. And uh, with this this research is extrapolated from multiple interviews that you've done. Okay. I wanted to ask about your, your childhood. Asa. That um, uh, our uh, researcher has-, has Put together. That, mm. you, were, you were bullied lah. As, as a child. No, but there were a lot of cat calls. Uh. Uh. Like I have to live with Apu Nene. You know, my, my classmate uh. used to ask me, is the darky guy your uncle? You know, the black guy on the toothpaste? Dali. But but now it's Dali. Now yeah. No oh. way. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was born into Dali. No, it was darky first. Yeah. So I got oh, dude, darky as in dark, as in blacky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit, yeah. oh my God. Then the black guy. 
face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they also change it like because <laughs> everybody- Last time marketing yeah, don't give chance. Just, yeah. <laughs> no, the fact that the it's brand can like still that. exist is quite yeah, remarkable. Yeah. No, I love the two-faced though. You know what I mean? No frills. It just, you know, it's just- <laughs> So there, there were most racism was coming from then a <coughs> lot, yeah. a okay. lot. Now we also have like my friend who is my friend, my girlfriend is Indian, so she married an Indian and then she has a boy who very brown skin. In the children playground, got Chinese mother tell the son don't play with the black skin. Oh. Say yeah. Mandarin, but because mm. she's Indian, she knows Mandarin. She oh. that. yeah. That's why nowadays people must understand that a lot of non-Chinese can't speak Mandarin. So I think they all need to stop this racism thing because people, and then my girlfriend went to her and asked her, what do you mean by he cannot play with my son? Wow, she panicked, no. Then she said, oh, my husband calling. So by my my time is blatant, you know, like just, mm. just tell you, you're just you're Apu Nene, you're Indian, you're Hoopla, you know? Yeah. This was from other kids or from like adults? I think something? it comes from home. What do you think is the most common piece of advice you give to young people now? Socialize, mingle, talk to older people, make friends with your, your grandparents are not part of the furniture and your parents are not there just to provide. They are your parents. Simple, all this is simple. Yeah. They have to just know, because grandparents are totally ignored. Just saying a hi to them is not much. Mm. Know their existence. That's why a lot of old people saying they are staying with their family but they still feel lonely because of nobody's acknowledging them. Mm. Mm. We were recently doing content in, for, for this um, government agency, right? It was quite sad because we were visiting a bunch of uh, homeless people mm. and many of them actually own a home. They mm. are just alone in their house and their key fear for most of the people I met is that if they, they fall down or they die in their house, nobody will know and nobody will yeah. do their funeral. Wow, and I broke my heart. So, so they've been sleeping outside. That is yeah. the new and program in Chinese Asia coming out June 24th. It's called what? Dying Alone. I see. Because the cases of old people living alone has gone up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So has the dying. Last year alone, 37 people died alone in the house. Right. There is help. La. There is. But somebody need to help the Gen Zs to understand the old people. Mm. So that you can make them meet somewhere. You don't like that generation, uh? is it? Is, is that the vibe <laughs> I'm getting of you? Uh, so you don't know, not a big fan of this. No, gen. no, I like some and I don't like some. Yeah. You know the shoulder thing was oh, damn irritating. <laughs> What's it? What you know, you when, when you ask your friend's kid, you eat already no? Oh. Oh, it's cool today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the shit, eh? That's why they practice. But that is, <laughs> that, is <laughs> that is a social problem. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because they're always on their phone, so when they go out, they don't mingle. They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to talk. Yeah. They're talking on the phone. Is there a method to the way you write comedy? No, I just take issues uh, that I think is issues. And I uh, will talk about it like, do you all even know that there are flavored condoms? Yeah. Yes. I mean, real flavored condom. Like China has mala. Uh -huh. Mala? Oh. Yeah. India has chi chicken tikka. <laughs> Bangkok, Thailand just announced their Green curry. sticky man mango. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I always felt like it was the best one, to be honest. It was always the April Fool's joke by Durek. Yeah, is it not? No, but they're all flavored. Ah. Now they have all these funny, funny flavors, but people okay. collect as a collector, not use. Uh, 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 or oh, chewing gum, I would think flavored condoms would mm. be great chewing gum actually. Yeah, but <laughs> they're using all this national <laughs> food, <laughs> which is so funny. Yeah, it always goes back to sex, like everything. Has to, back to sex. Has to yeah. la, because zero point nine seven percent of Singaporeans only having sex. No. Yes, that's statistic. Zero that means we're not having enough. Having sex. Yeah, healthy healthy marriage is sex, according to Doctor Oz, is four times a week. Oh. But oh, yeah, how yeah, many yeah. of you I'm even have once a month? Because you're mm. both working and you're too tired when you come back. So I don't have sex because my dogs don't allow. <laughs> I have to do it outside. <laughs> Because my dog attacks. That was the setup. Oh. You, know, you got oh. the plan set up. Oh, no, it was. Yeah, you, was just, yeah. you just yeah. had another He's talk. a natural. <laughs> yeah. no, no, just, no, I, my, when I have my friends at home, they come and hug me, my dog will attack. Oh. <laughs> All three? One only. All three. The oh. older one. Oh. Well, he started from the but statistics yeah. at the zero setup. point something. <laughs> but the really just do you even one. know that you were going to go there? You don't know, right? You had no idea. Where? 0 0.97? Yeah, when you when you said the 0 0.97. No, no, no. The you you didn't know you were going to end with the dog story, right? No. No, it's just <laughs> like, no, no, no. Oh, you yeah, thought yeah. I planned it. Uh. I don't know. It sounds like it's a like setup. I don't know where you're going. No, no, no. Because your questions are not like I remembered what. <laughs> Is it? What? <laughs> no, your questions are not coming out from here anymore already. What? 
we are just going with yeah. the flow, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like when you're on stage, right? Especially for like <laughs> big shows, like like Guilty or like Uncut, right? Are there times where you literally just something comes to your head and then you just like say yeah. a new joke? But then halfway, right? The the thought stop forming in your head, so you abandon that thought on the stage. Or it doesn't happen to Kuma. No, goddamn. Mm. I'll finish it. He knows. One of our viewers has actually asked, right? Like, are you sure, or are you just making this up? No, no, yeah, 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 no. <laughs> oh, they actually asked, like, what is the worst encounter that you recall during one of your shows? I don't remember. Oh, <laughs> make up something. Oh huh? uh, wait, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was one last year MBS show. There was an Indian man who didn't laugh at all, sitting in the corner. But I was at that the show, right? Yeah, yeah, he didn't laugh. That's that's that kind of audience you really don't want. Right. You but he's one him. guy in the room why are you offended no, but that kind of audience you don't want I'm not offended yeah. but don't come yeah it was there funny every, every 20 minutes you were still checking yeah. on him <laughs> <laughs> you know he was very smart so when I walked through the audience yeah. he actually walked and go and stand at the door oh. because he didn't want to have a yeah, very understanding or even like though after that I went up he walked down I saw him <laughs> so the actor played catching the whole show <laughs> <laughs> because the wife was having a good time but he wasn't so don't yeah. come don't waste your time. In, inversely, right? Somebody else asked, was there a most memorable encounter, like positive one with a fan? Many. Uh. One was this lady who had stroke. And then she was a very workaholic, Chinese lady, then she had a stroke. Then she had to quit a job. And then her daughter, to keep her happy, keep playing my YouTube videos. And the mother's birthday wish was to come and see me live. Wow. Mm. So the daughter, her father, the all grown up girls mm. brought the mother in a wheelchair. And when I was smoking outside, she came out, you know, because she can still walk a bit like, because she's recovering. And then she said, no, no, carry on smoking. I like the smell. I smoke, used to smoke. So she told me the whole story, which is very sweet. Right, right. This person is asking for advice for <laughs> younger comedians. Wow. Like what's a piece of advice you would give to them? Hello, Tanusha. Who <laughs> and if this is even a career that you should pursue in Singapore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't know, because it's it's like one of the hardest job job to be in is stand up comedy, you know. Because you it's very challenging, and I think first you need to understand yourself, and you must be able to make fun of yourself. Don't laugh at other people's expense. Make sure you make fun of people. You make fun of yourself. Mm. And a lot of people cannot do that. Like. <laughs> <laughs> we will cover your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I put a beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never say anything. <laughs> <are you? laughs> and now it is time for painting of the episode. Right. Then do oh. us the honors. Thank wow, you very much. This one is quite big actually. Yeah, it's way bigger than our previous one actually. Interesting. So here we go. Who is this okay. by? So this is by an artist called Eugene So, and it's actually titled very aptly. It's titled SG Chinese Gardens. Mm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, no wonder they're so familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so Eugene is an impressionist artist and he essentially like likes to take a lot of inspiration from artists such as Van Gogh. So Eugene's work is also much defined by its ethereal beauty as long as rich texture. Ethereal is, means what? Ethereal is like, like got like, oh, sound. <laughs> when, when, you, when you look I at it, it's like, I immediately understood oh, what you meant by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, and who is Eugene? So Eugene is actually a self-trained artist, but he actually has a bachelor's in math from NUS. And in his free time, when he's not painting, he's actually tutoring math. Oh, yeah. okay. So his condition is that he has a paraplegic blockage in his spinal cord. So it has required multiple surgeries. Okay, so I also understand that on October the 19th, there's going to be an event of sorts, right? Yes, so the Daily Ketchup has been a proud partner of Shaping Hearts, which is an all-inclusive arts festival. And if you are looking for meaningful pieces of art done by local artists with disabilities, you can check out Shaping Hearts at our Tampanese Hub on the 19th of October. Yeah, ah. It's something that we've taken on as an entire company. So we'll be making a lot of content across all our different channels as well. You'll see us also at uh, at Shaping Hearts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even you too, John Paul. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. It's something that we've decided to take on because it's really meaningful. Um, so yeah, see you there. See you there. Okay, thank you. Then please return the painting. Put this back. Huh. But this could be in one of your homes. And our viewers can buy this from online or only at the event? Right. You can buy it in location, but also throughout the year, you can buy it on their website. Okay, and so of course, a big thank you to Kuma for joining us today. His show is also currently available for you to book tickets. It's going to be at MBS Theatres from 10th of July to 28th of July. It's Kuma Uncut. Do check it out. We'll put the links and we'll see you in the next episode. Like, share, subscribe. Bye-bye. Bye. Is it likely that, say, if I cross-dress, right, that at some point I will be confused about Aren't whether you cross -dress I cross-dress now? To... Huh? No. Gender neutral. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I did not expect that. I got it from that show. 